Hey guys, Michael with Mealy Marie. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some glassing. We're gonna be filling some holes. We're gonna be doing all sorts of things. But first, we really need to thank our sponsors, Dakota Lithium, Gatorback Bunk, and Fulton. Thank you so much for sponsoring the videos, guys. And yeah, I'm in my house. I am editing some videos. Uh, it's a nonstop grind owning a business and making these YouTube videos and so sorry about last week not having a video out I know some of you guys really look forward to these videos and I've just been so busy and trying to have that good work-life balance that we all are trying to achieve So without further ado, let's get into it Bet you're wondering what Grumpy is doing today. So Michael and I are going to bond the pink foam in place. As you all may remember, we had already we'd already covered this on both sides. I believe one sheet of 1708 and one sheet of uh, chopped strand. And that's to give it support. Same here. This is just basically to give it support. So when we glue it in place, the inside, you're not really gonna see, it's gonna be carpeted. The outside, obviously, we have to blend into here so we have a good bond. But we're gonna be putting this in place. We're gonna be using our glass mix. Um, I can't, what is that white powder? Thick and epoxy. Thick and epoxy. I want to get Michael to write thick and epoxy on his forehead so I remember that. So we're going to be using a mixture of just straight epoxy and thick, thick and epoxy to put these in place. And then obviously after they're set in place, we will be going back and glassing over them and blending it into the existing structure. As, as you know, we have experience of doing this now from this ice chest, ice locker, whatever you want to call it, modification. So uh, we've kind of been putting this off a little bit because the weather's been really cold. It's still pretty cool, um, but it's kind of getting to the stage where we need to move on. So we're going to epoxy it. It's, it's going to take quite a while probably for it to set up a lot longer than it usually does. So we're going to get started on that today. Then I plan to work on the other side, I'm going to sand down the side and I'm going to put some of the fairing material in because I don't want to have to sand that so much when I've got the inside of the locker over here. So I want to kind of get those. You can't finish them because we've obviously got to blend it in, but I want to reduce the amount of work that we have to do on that particular part when it's actually in situ. Same with this one here. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on these today to uh, get them to a position where we can bond them in, but the amount of sanding that we have to do lent over on stuff is dramatically reduced.
So a long update here. Michael wanted me to do a quick update, so I'm gonna do a long update. Okay, so as usual, you've already seen this up front before. So we'd already feathered it out. We've come in, put 1708, chop strand, 1708, chop strand to fill in these divots and all kinds of different things that we had up here. I can't even remember what all these holes were for. I guess it doesn't really matter. We've decided to get rid of them all. So we got those out of the way. Uh, you'll see here where Michael's been using some of the fair filler, whatever it's called, um, to tighten this up a little bit in here, take out some of the low spots. Uh, same here, put some more of that fairing compound in here. We're trying to take out the low spots on this, this deck. I don't, don't want to keep on sanding on it, so we're going to be, as you can see right here, we have some pretty deep low spots, and this, it, this fairing uh, compound works really, really well in these areas. Uh, you know, I want to keep it down to a minimum, uh, but we're going to need some of that. As you can see here, we've been, these are the holes we've filled already, right here. We've sanded those down. Originally, I was using the DeWalt, sorry, I was using the DeWalt sander, and I was using regular 40 grit, and um, it was working, but it wasn't working well. I was going through a lot of uh, pads, and it's like, wow, you know, especially where we had the high spots. I mean, this epoxy was, wow, it's like unbelievable. So, and I was actually using 40 grit, which is extremely aggressive. I, I don't really like to use 40 grit, but I was using 40 grit and really wasn't doing much of anything. And then I decided to give this little bad boy a chance and I just kind of hit the spots where we had plugged the holes. And that's the problem areas I was having was because we plugged the holes with hard wood and then we epoxied them in. Well, the epoxy had raised up and the hard wood was there. So when I hit it with this bad boy, this is Michael's tool, it worked really well. I was super impressed with this tool. And uh, if you're gonna be doing this kind of work, get yourself one of these. It, really super impressed with it. I'm probably gonna buy one for myself for the house, uh, but this thing has definitely earned its, its keep today. When I filled the holes up here, there's some video of that. Michael will, can stick it in there, or you might have already seen it, but we filled the holes no different than we did before. Poxid stick the holes in. Every time we think we've got all the holes filled, we find more holes, but that's just part of it. Uh, there's no point in worrying about it. Um, what I did do, uh, Michael spared no expense and got me some of these. And these are called, I looked at it, and I'm sorry because I've already forgot, it's called, bless you, it's called Sandnet. And I've got to say, pretty impressed with these. At Home Depot, these are, a, it works out to be about a book, book 40 a piece, uh, which is kind of expensive for abrasives. Um, and so, but they work real well. Works excellent on this, because we're clogging up. And I guess if you take, at the end of the day, three of the other ones for every one of those. So we also went ahead and we've been filling more holes back here. And we're gonna continue to sand on this. Um, I, I don't wanna get it too low, but I wanna sand it to where we've got it relatively level. And the other thing about it is like right in here, this, the shiny stuff is very, very, um, it's extremely abrasive. You know, if you rub your hands on it, it's like rubbing it on sandpaper. Uh, so we've got, I gotta do something about that. I gotta make some decisions on how we're gonna handle that. And I'll let you know how we handle that as we move forward. As you will have seen in the video, we epoxied this in place with the epoxy filler material. So we used epoxy with an adder in it and it thickens it up and it gives us a cushion to set this in. So because the fiberglass is all flat and we've ground on it and all the rest of it. So we laid it on fairly quick, sorry, fairly thick and then pushed the uh, foam into place and it squashes out where you, where you don't need it and then fills in the areas you do. Uh, if you're going to do this, I highly advise you doing that because the straight epoxy is not going to be thick enough for you to do it. 
So uh, the other thing that we're kind of working on and we're getting better at is cleaning up after ourselves because this stuff is difficult to sand off and we don't want to be spending any more time sanding than we already have. That thing has already started set up. It's approximately about six hours now and it's set up pretty, pretty hard. We did go in, some of this was already glassed. We went in and kind of roughed that up, sanding it this morning. The other thing that I want to mention whilst we're here is on this particular one, we had glassed from that point there to this point here, and we had fiberglassed the entire back. But there was this section right here which needed to come up against this bulkhead thing here. We did glass, and we got a bend in it. So kind of keep that in mind when you do this. Uh, we were fortunate enough because where we was putting it, we could put a screw in it to hold it in place while the epoxy sets up. But keep that in mind. If you're not going to totally uh, epoxy the size evenly or glass the size evenly, you're probably going to get a little bit of a bend in it. You might want to take that in consideration. The other thing is if even if you're glassing both sides, glass the one side, let it start to get tacked up, and then do the opposite side as fast as you can. If you don't, you're going to end up with a bend in it because the glass seems to want to pull it. Uh, I've seen it on wood when we've done wood and glass, and I've also seen it on some other things where it'll pull in one direction. I did sand these this morning, uh, worked on this radius a little bit, uh, and we put the fairing count compound on it. This is not finished. I'm going to sand this off, but the idea is to get it at a reasonable level because the last glass that we put on is chop strand and the chop strand tends to be a little uneven and I don't want to be sanding this you know like this inside the boat so I'm going to get this it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be fairly close so when we glass this all in we're not having to really work so hard and can find areas Michael's a pretty big guy he's 6'4 uh, he weighs about 250 so it's difficult in some of these areas to get in so uh, we sanded this morning put the fairing compound on this it's tacking up but it's not dry uh, probably when we come in and sand this you're not going to hardly see any of this you'll see little patches here and there uh, but then we're going to obviously epoxy with the thickener these into place will be the next thing but I want to get these a little bit nicer looking just so that we're not sanding 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 so that's kind of the the update, we've been very productive today. Uh, and I, I guess some of the stuff Michael and I would just chat about whilst we're doing it is, you know, sometimes you come in and you go, oh, I've got to sand, you know, and, and it's not the greatest thing to do, but it's amazing. Once you get going on it, it uh, does go fairly well. I've been putting it off for a couple of days, to be honest with you. Uh, I wish now that I'd have jumped in and got started a couple of days ago. So, you know, even if you just put a couple of hours in it, uh, it goes a long way and, and you get a lot achieved and then you kind of get in the momentum of it. I mean, put your earbuds in. I listen to audio books whilst I'm doing it. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the biggest pain is, is having to wear all this stuff, but it does help uh, protect you and stuff so we appreciate you tuning in I, I know i tend to ramble on at times I, probably at my age i should write a list of what we've done um but i do appreciate you tuning in michael appreciates you tuning in so if you think about it if you'd like subscribe and share with your friends we really would appreciate it and uh you know stay tuned and we'll keep you updated and don't forget to comment uh always like reading the comments by the way so thank you so it's been a little while since I've given you guys an update on the expenses for the Ranger 393. If you guys watched the last video, you guys know that the boat, motor, lower unit, and the manual have equaled $7,540. So that's gonna be our base starting line. Um, as far as the rest of these numbers I'm gonna show you, we are a few weeks ahead of the video series that you were seeing. So these numbers are up to date uh, a few weeks ahead. So while we haven't used this much glass or epoxies or things like that, we will be using this much. And um, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. So like I said, we got the boat and motor for seven, $7,540. We got glass and foam for $500. So that includes 1708, uh, 1.5 ounce chop strand, and three quarter ounce chop strand and some uh, other miscellaneous type glasses that we were messing with. And then for the foam board, we had half, 
one inch and two inch thick foam. So that's our total cost for foam and glass. It doesn't mean that we used all of that, but that's how much we spent. We probably did not use $500 worth of all that stuff. I did buy large spools of glass, which probably wasn't needed, but it's better safe than sorry. Moving on to the biggest expense so far in this project is epoxies. So that comes in at $1,100. That not only includes our, you know, our epoxy, our two-part epoxy, that also includes other things like our two-part foam mixture, our fairing compound, things like that. So I guess it would be more like glass supplies or whatever. So that is our biggest expense. We spent quite a bit of money on just epoxy alone. I've gone through roughly about four gallons of epoxy and a lot of that has been waste and things like that. So uh, just something to keep in mind. That's why a lot of people do this out of polyester resin because it is a lot, lot cheaper. And then lastly, we got $400 in tools. This includes spatulas, paint brushes, uh, can't like uh, the clear containers to hold all the epoxy in, uh, rollers, anything you can think of, gloves, all sorts of supplies and tools that you need. We've spent about $400. Um, we use some of them and we don't use some of them. So that's kind of part of it. You're gonna buy things that you don't use and you're gonna buy things that you haven't ordered enough of and you're gonna order more of them. So our grand total is $9,540. So guys, I'd love to hear in the comments below what you guys think this boat is gonna end up costing, including our labor. So we have about two months into this project. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think this boat will be worth at the end of it. Um, and I wanna give a special thank to our sponsors, Dakota Lithium, Gatorback Bunks and Fulton. They have greatly diminished the cost of this project. And I also wanna thank the viewers because each one of your views does help a little bit towards this project. So I greatly appreciate it. If you guys could help share this video and get this series out there so that we can kind of recoup some of this cost on this project, I would greatly appreciate it because all this money is coming out of my pocket except for what our sponsors give us. So guys, thank you so much and be sure to check back next week because we got a lot, a lot of crazy cool things coming up. I think you guys are gonna be blown away. Like I said, we're about three weeks ahead and I am so happy with the work that we have going on. So guys, be sure to check back next week. Until next time.